get ready for the climb. How's it going guys? My name is Andrew. I'm a data scientist here in Silicon Valley. I'm here to talk about GME and AMC options chain suspicious activity. I'm also here to talk about what the buy and sell signals are and what levels they're going to be and a little bit of technical analysis. And finally, we're going to talk about over a hundred million in short interest all of which is going to be in this video. Watch until the end because I want you guys to know top of the news here is that AMC is ditching out 425,000 shareholders worth of free NFTs. This is Mr. Adam Aaron saying emails in detailing how to claim your AMC Investor Connect I own AMC NFTs will be sent out next week. So if you guys were able to enroll by this date, guys, we talked about it, right? Show off your NFTs in the comments as well as on Twitter and Instagram, Andrew Mo Money, uh, wherever you have in social media. 20% short interest. Okay, so let's talk about the number of short that we have been looking at historically. Over 100 million is now looking at one out of every five potential bananas on the tree, potential stocks that could be borrowed and then sold already shorted. Now, we know that the number right here could become much, much larger if same day reporting is mandated by the SEC sometime next week. We have a whole video about that. That was the last video that we just talked about. If you guys haven't yet slapped that like, it is the 90 second mark. So I have to say, please do if you find this video something that you want to push to more retail investors and apes in the future. Let's talk about AMC and GME suspicious options. For GME, you're looking at a $100 strike, right? That's $2 million right there of today alone. Now, if that's not a suspicious spike, you can take a look historically. We saw this yesterday as well. Not so much the day before, but that was over Martin Luther King trading holiday. That's the trading break. Notice that right before the break, we on the 13th of January saw a lot of congregation on the far right side are out of the money calls. So we are still waiting for GME to be able to ramp upwards because someone has just put uh, three quarters of a million dollars worth of calls on the far, far right side as early as a few days ago in terms of trading. What I want to be able to talk to you guys about is what historic data says about the climb. In 30 years since US 10 year yields rose this much to start a year. Bond yields are rising again in 2022. U.S. stock market seems vulnerable to a bona fide correction. What can you tell from a mere two weeks into a new year? Not much, but quite a lot. One thing feels assured. The days of making easy money are over in a pandemic era. Benchmark interest rates are headed higher and bond yields, which had been anchored at historically low levels, are destined to rise in tandem. Seemed like the Federal Reserve members couldn't make that point any clearer this past week ahead of the traditional media blackout that precedes the central bank's first policy meeting of the year on January 25th, the 26th. Comment out if you guys want us to be live streaming or whatever we can on that timeline. We're talking about U.S. Consumer Price and Producer Price Index releases this week have only cemented the market's expectations of a more aggressive or hawkish monetary policy from the Fed. The real question is how many interest rate increases will the Federal Open Market Committee dole out in 2022? JP Morgan Chase and Co. JPM CEO da Jamie Dimon in intimated, int intimated that seven might be the number to beat, with market-based projections pointing to the potential for three increases to the federal funds rate in the coming months. Meanwhile, yields, yields for the 10-year Treasury note yielded 1.771% Friday afternoon, which means that the yields have climbed about 26 basis points in the first 10 trading days to start a calendar year, which would be the briskest such a rise since 1992, according to Dow Jones market data. Back 30 years ago, the 10 year rose 32 basis points around 7% to start that year. So now that we're looking at the market sinking as much as we've seen it ever, especially since we are now getting close to repeating January 2021's course of actions that allowed us the gamma squeeze, both AMC and GME, almost an entire year ago. Are we looking at just another deja vu moment? Are we looking at the exact same historic event because of how the market overall as a structure, as the bowl in which the stage is set, is starting to rock back and forth? Do interest rate increases translate to a weaker stock market? As it turns out, during so-called rate height cycles, which we seem 
uh, set to enter into as early as March, the market tends to perform strongly, not poorly. In fact, during a Fed rate hike period, the average return for Dow Jones is nearly 55%. That of the S&P 500 is a gain of 62%, and the Nasdaq Composite has averaged a positive return of 102.7%, according to Dow Jones, using data going back to 1989. Fed interest rate cuts perhaps unsurprisingly, also yield strong gains, with the Dow up 23% and S&P 500 gaining 21%, NASDAQ rising 32% on average during a period of Fed rate cuts. Interest rate cuts tend to occur during periods when the economy is weak and rate hikes when the economy is viewed as too hot by some measure. If we, that can ever happen, <laughs> which of course they happen, which may account for the disparity in stock market performance during periods when interest rate reductions occur. To be sure, it is harder to see the market producing outperformance during a period in which the economy experiences 1970s style inflation. Right now, it seems unlikely that bullish investors will get a whiff of double digit returns based on the way stocks are shaping up so far in 2022. Dow is down 1.2%, S&P 500 is off 2.2%, while the Nasdaq Composite is down a whopping 4.8% thus far in January. So what's working? So far, winning stock market trades have been in energy with the S&P 500's energy sector looking at 16.4% advance so far, while financials are running a distant second up 4.5%. The other nine sectors of S&P 500 are either flat or lower. Meanwhile, value themes are making a more pronounced comeback, eking out a 0.1% weekly gain last week as measured by iShares S&P 500 Value ETF IVE. But month to date, the return is 1.2%. Growth factors are getting hammered right now, okay? As far as bond yields rise because of a rapid rise in yields makes their future cash flows less valuable. Higher interest rates also hinder technology companies' ability to fund stock buybacks. The popular iShares S&P 500 growth ETF IVW is down 0.6%. And you don't even want to talk about Kathy Wood's uh, ARK Innovation ETF and biotech stocks. Honestly, what do I feel like is happening right now in the market? There's, a, e there's an eking of the scared to the uh, just the conservative. The bears of the market are looking at a potential time to bite into the market and clamp down on already suffering sectors. However, the rest of the market is looking eagerly at the climb, the return of good times, as was uh, exactly what happened in 2021. So if you guys want to continue watching the squeeze with me, that subscribe button is the best way to be able to ensure that you guys are slapping that bell and getting notifications. So if you guys haven't done that yet, I'll give you a second. And if you guys liked the popcorn shirt over here, where's my popcorn? Right here. The popcorn shirt as well as Meatball's little hat, I would prefer that you guys check out the links down below. Check out the 20% off you guys get on Lux Algorithm. That is the one that gives you buy and sell signal. You can use it not only for AMC, GME, other stocks that you care about, but you can also use it for crypto. For example, if you take a look at Bitcoin now, you'll be able to see Bitcoin USD. You'll be able to see either a buy or a sell signal. Look at the tumultuous sell signal here. Right after the buy signal would have gotten you in to BTC at around 41,500, the strong signal would have gotten you out at 42,300. So easy peasy trading for beginners and experts alike. This was not financial advice. Thanks to those of you who make this show possible over on Patreon, as well as the people who pressed the join button next to the subscribe button. And we'll see all of you in the money.